Happy Bungie Anniversary guys, I hope you're all having fun with the new Zerm and Star Wars theme show. This DLC has been absolutely wonderful and very rewarding in terms of all the items it offers, especially the weapons which have to be the best weaponry we have gotten in a while. With that said, I want to move our focus onto the new legendary trace rifle we tracked the path, which is a first of its kind and immensely powerful within its own right. Today I'm going to be giving you a warlock build that will not only make the weapon ST in damage, but also grant you super energy back at a rapid rate to further enhance your damage entirely. Super simple, but easily the best solar trace rifle build that you can put on and go to town with, and honestly I love how powerful this can get with the right combinations. So like usual, if you enjoyed the video then I really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using the Tumen of Grace for the support ability empowerment we can achieve via solo or in teams. Usually we would use a Tumen of Grace if we plan to rock up and use Phoenix Protocol, but this time round I have decided to use it only for abilities empowerments it can offer. Guiding Flame can allow us to empower our weapons damage if we land a melee hit on a combatant, which is easy to achieve and maintain. Bin 11 Dawn will allow us to gain ability energy as long as an ally stands within our rifts when doing so, and this was the a lot of usage for keeping our wells properly stacked. Even Divine Protection has its usage from what I've experienced, as this can come in clutch when surrounded or you need your teammate to survive. Although this is all great, the main bread and butter of the build will be coming from the Battle Harmony attached. The point of the Zotic is to not use your super at all, and doing so will grant you 20% increased damage as well as extra super energy from kills. As the other solar subclasses don't fit the theme of the build well, Radiance Well seems to be the best one to aim for as even if I don't use my super, I can easily build it back up via Elemental Wells and Well of Potency, plus it's kind of a neutral super in general. All of this in the mix is basically creating a well-tuned reactor that can self-retain its ability flow over and over again. To give you an idea as to how the build plays once active, with front of my active we will gain a 25% weapon damage increasement, then with the Battle Harmony we will get a 20% damage increasement, which is a 45% increasement overall. And then lastly with One For All from the Retracted Path Trace Rifle, that's going to give me a 35% weapons buff on top of all the other buffs. Overall, Retracted Path will do 80% more damage than normal. 80% is a lot, but we can of course go higher if you have the Golden Tricorn perk. Now that's where the damage can go even more overboard. For the weapons, it makes sense to have Retracted Pam as our main secondary weapon, and perhaps a Galahorn as well so we can make use of the damage buffs from previously. This will then leave your primary, which is down to you, but ideally a weapon with Osmosis is the best choice to go with. My primary for example is the Biting Wind's Bow with Killing Wind and Swashbuckler, and I'm going to be using this to counter the many Overload Champions that seem to have increased over the season. Good and easy to get bow that can carry you from hardest content around, the role I have also comes with Swash Buckler which is going to be great with this build, since everything I'm doing is building and escalating damage as I go on. Once my super runs out, I can easily swap to the bow and one to two tap most combatants with ease, as long as the stacks are available. Alternatively, if you can get your hands on the Guiding Sight Scout Rifle from the Iron Banner with Osmosis, that can carry you relatively far as well and allow you to keep your distance while waiting for more special ammo to appear, which is gonna happen a lot. The second dream is the Retracted Path Trace Rifle with Feeding Frenzy and One For All, and this new weapon is able to put in a lot of damage over time once we get the following buzz active. As it's a legendary weapon, this means that we are free to use an exotic of our choice instead of using the Prometheus Lens, which was the only solar trace rifle around. With this being the case, I thought it would be a wise idea to chuck in the Galahorn, since why not? Now the trace rifle can roll with a number of perks that can make it godly in all activities, my version allows faster reload and on kills and a 35% damage buff on 3 separate hits and this is as you can tell will make my weapon a powerhouse in your hand. The other role that is recommended is one that has Substance and Golden Tricon, which is the gold role you want to aim for. That weapon will not only auto reload your weapons on kills, but the Golden Tricon perk can give you a 14% damage buff from weapon kills and then a whopping 40% damage buff on top of it if you get a melee or grenade kill, which is overall a 50% weapon buff. Both roles offer near the same benefits as each other, but with different activation fees. Either way, if you land either role, be sure to lock it down and use it with any ability based builds in mind, and you will honestly not regret it.
For Heavy, I have the Galahorn, which is a returning weapon from D1, and it only makes perfect sense to equip it within the build. With its huge damage potential it can offer from simply using it alone, you can easily take out a large group of combatants to even a boss in 1-2 to two shots. With Font of Might and Battle Harmony 45% sealed above, we can apply this to our rocket launcher to cause even more chaos in the making. If we want even more damage though, all we need to do is chuck on the Argon Ordnance mod for an extra 20% on top of it, which on top of the other buffs, means that you can probably or potentially create a crater in the moon, if that's your kind of thing. For stats, this will play a huge part in the build as we need to keep our abilities going as well as keeping the buffs going as well. It's going to be best you focus on the most active skills that you know you're going to be using all the time, such as Discipline, Rifts or MIDI. Just a heads up, we do have the Benevolent Dawn perk being active once we use our Rift, so this will be an extra source of ability energy as long as we keep it afloat. For this, aim for at least 70, as passively this will be a number one skill that will regenerate the fastest. Discipline should be at the 60 to 80 ranges, as with the Elemental Ordnance at the helm, we can produce a number of wells back to back with our Firebolt Grenades, which is the single most fastest grenade that regen quickly. We want this area to be fully pumped up so we can always rely on it while our other abilities are covering. So I would recommend that you equip the grenade kickstart mod for that extra energy and grenade ability once it's being used, and the bountiful well mod so that we can create times two wells upon using our abilities. And this will help massively with recovery over time. We then have an intellect which I've left at 60, although this can be reduced down to 30 if you want it as everything within the build will easily allow you to get our battle harmony buff active straight away. Considering that Battle Harmony provides super energy from kills we make, this could be enough from there and then we can opt into using other mods to make the build expand further out. Instead, just like our discipline, we want to use this ability as much as possible so that we can fully have its effects there and then. For this, I have Ashes Assets which will grant me super energy every time I get a kill with my grenades, and then I have Hands On for the same effect as Ashes to Assets but via melee. And then lastly we have the Well of Potency mod, that upon creating wells, will grant me super energy as I go along, which isn't a lot but is still noticeable. All of this here will give you the means to create a super divided build to where your input will severely enhance your output. This now leaves us with a few other mods that do have an effect in the build but through other means. The Font of Might for example will be granting us an extra 25% weapon buff to our solar weapons once we have collected the corresponding wells to them. Trace Rifle Scavenger will be giving us a bonus reserve for collecting Trace Rifle ammo and this will be very important considering how quickly you'll burn through ammo. Recuperation will be granting us health each time we collect an orb of power, which is useful if you decide to use this build in higher tier content. Elemental Armors will allow my solar based weapons to create wild spawn kills, so overall will become a well dispenser for our missions. And then lastly we have the Withering Heat mod, which allows us to inflict an extra 30% debuff on champions, which with our buffs going, will disintegrate them in seconds, and I wish I was joking about that last part. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for, for the overall effectiveness of the build. For head we have Resilience, Hands On, Ashes to Assets and Bountiful Well mod. Arm we have Minor Discipline, Grenade Kickstart and Elemental Orders mod. The chest we have minor intellect, because it's stamina times 2, and world potency mod. The leg we have minor discipline, recuperation, trace fire scavenger, and fault of might mod. Bond we have minor discipline, withering heat, and elemental armor mod. As you can see, this build does a huge amount of consistent damage if we manage to get the ball rolling. Simply getting the active buffs are as easy as you would expect, and then gathering the super energy necessary to sustain the build is even more easier considering how much energy is going back. If I was to swap out the chest piece for the 3 minutes protocol instead for example, we could easily make Radiant's build 3.0 via this method alone, although now that I mention that I might have to make a note around that actually. Now a lot of your kills will stem from your grenades and weapons and this is where you'll be able to keep the increased damage ongoing as you play. An 80% damage increasement from simply activating one for all, Font of Might and Battle Harmony is a lot for a single buff to our Trace Rifle. But from using it you can see how well this all pays off as you can disintegrate minor, major and ultra patterns within a few shots. And from the kills, your abilities and super will always be fully filled thanks to the powerful well, elemental armaments and elemental ordnance mod 
and you can repeat this as many times as you like with no downsides to it, as long as you have your subclass perk, such as the Benevolent Dawn, available when you need it most. And if push comes to shove, you can always just pop your super. Now the build won't allow you to easily take out bosses with a few hits, but the damage you can give off is significantly enough for you to opt in and use the weapon as a heavy, if your heavy weapon is out of ammo. Having both Retracted Path and Galahorn in one build is what I like to call an overkill build as this will eat through health like butter. Hell, even on their own it can tide you well, especially if you land critical hits with RP as that's where the numbers will matter the most. For a heavy of course, you can simply just fire and forget and the damage will do the rest. Of course, the only downside of the build is to be aware of is the ammo economy for our Trace Rifle which burns out very quickly if you're not careful. I would recommend you stock up and scavenger and find the mods as this weapon is like a pig. It will keep eating and eating more of its own fuel before it can be somewhat useful again. Overall, for the love of god go out and get the weapon now and try this build out. If you love the idea of firing a death beam non-stop that keeps getting stronger and stronger as you use it, then you'll love this setup. And if not, well of course you can use this build for something else, won't you? So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.